Item number SCP-5850 Clearance Level 3 Confidential Containment Class Keter Disruption Class 4 Eki Risk Class 5 Critical Special Containment Procedures Due to the nature of SCP-5850, containment is not possible at the present time. Foundation personnel tasked with monitoring SCP-5850 are to be granted administrative access to all train traffic control systems operating within the United States. Reports concerning SCP-5850 are to be stored within a dedicated server and evaluated weekly. These reports must include the following information. SCP-5850's current, prior, and all previously reported locations. Observed changes in velocity, magnitude, or physical structure. Copies of public material concerning SCP-5850. This material includes, but is not limited to, photographs, videos, and police reports. Dedicated observation to newly discovered SCP-5850-A instances. Measurements of SCP-5850's current ULF value. In the event that SCP-5850 travels through a populated area, Foundation personnel are to reroute or stop all incoming traffic so that no individuals are affected by the anomaly. In the event that these procedures fail, and any human subject perishes due to SCP-5850, the confiscation of any recording devices, along with the amnestization of the populace that observed SCP-5850 is required. Description. SCP-5850 is a passenger locomotive currently in transit within the United States and has never been observed to stop or decelerate under any circumstances. SCP-5850 has plowed through all known obstructions with no loss in velocity. SCP-5850 has also been observed to maintain its speed even with the absence of rails. The current cause of this remains unknown. Upon its discovery in 1924, SCP-5850 maintained a velocity recorded at approximately 120 km per hour, and has since accelerated an additional 26 times to a current velocity of 145 km per hour. SCP-5850 has also been classified as an anti-existential object due to its effects on dimensional energy and localized spacetime. SCP-5850's physical structure consists of steel, aluminum, zinc, and plastic. Along both sides of SCP-5850 reads Investago Railroad Company, which spans 70% of its total length. Ten passenger cars are attached to SCP-5850, which also contains SCP-5850-A instances. SCP-5850-A refers to 24 indistinct humanoid entities observed throughout the entirety of SCP-5850. These entities manifest after SCP-5850 collides with human subjects, followed forward with a flash of light. Current research efforts are to ascertain the established connection between these entities and their perceived effect on SCP-5850 speed. These entities do not appear to require sustenance. Addendum 5850-1 On March 14, 2020, Senior Researcher Kenneth Williams submitted a request for experimentation on SCP-5850. When asked about his reasons, Researcher Williams submitted a report titled, All Values and Their Hypothetical Effect on Space-Time, which has been attached to Addendum 5850.2 of this document. Listed below is the video log after his report was formally accepted. Video Transcript 5850-A Video Log Date March 26, 2020 Note The following video was recorded to observe and analyze SCP-5850. Footage recorded was taken from the perspective of Senior Researcher Williams. Accompanying him is Dr. Raines, Mobile Task Force ND-1 Captain Russells, and MTF ND-1 Sergeant Stevenson. The research team was also given several other devices, per Researcher Williams' request. Begin Log Video recording begins in an MTF ND-1 designated vehicle traveling northbound. In front of the camera is Dr. Raines, 
The perspective pans around the interior of the vehicle, introducing MTF ND-1 Sergeant Stevenson and Captain Russell who sit alongside. Are you sure you understand what you're doing, Kenneth? Of course. Why do you ask? Well, it's just what you're proposing. Do you really think the counters are going to work? I couldn't tell you. Sergeant, are we getting close? Stevenson looks out the left window. Almost. Give us another minute. We'll let you know when we see. For now, stay cozy. Silence for 15 seconds. Laura, you know what you're doing, right? No, not really. You haven't really told me anything. I know, I know. But trust me, this is important. We've gone for years without fully understanding what this thing is. Hopefully, if the math checks out, this test should tell us something. You keep saying that, but I still haven't heard you actually say what it is you're talking about. It's just a hunch, Laura. A hunch about what, Ken? Hey fellas, we're at the location. The vehicle turns sharply to the right before coming to a complete stop. All four passengers disembark, and the camera pans across a straight road leading to a railroad crossing. Williams and Reigns run to the railroad crossing, each carrying a pair of long aluminum rods with a bulbous tip. How far are we from SCP-5850? We're about 25 kilometers away at this point. Alright then. Fuck. Laura, let's get this equipment set up. You remember how I showed you, right? Good. Let's hurry then. We've only about ten minutes. Williams and Reigns begin setting up the ULF counters in four separate locations, which corner the railroad crossing. Afterward, they connect each counter using a physical wire before bridging them together onto a computer terminal located ten meters away. Williams sits near the terminals, as Reigns continues setting up the ULF counters. Laura, how are we looking so far? I'm almost finished. How long do we have left? Less than five minutes. Come on, you can leave them alone. They should be good as they are now. Laura, please. There's no reason to risk your life over them. Range vacates the area and moves to Williams. You better hope this hunch of yours is right, Kenneth. Let's fucking hope so. Alright, I'm turning it on now. The computer terminal boots on and begins running an unknown program. In the distance, SCP-5850's horn blares. Alright, you son of a bitch. Come to daddy. Is that really necessary? Sorry, what? I'm having a hard time hearing you due to this loud-ass fucking train. SCP-5850 arrives at the location. As it progresses, Several instances of SCP-5850-A are visible within its interior. SCP-5850-A does not react to Williams or Reigns, despite their proximity. It takes approximately two minutes for SCP-5850 to pass. During this time, Williams' computer terminal begins to flash. This ends when SCP-5850 exits the area. Well? Did you learn anything? Williams did not respond to Reigns, continuing to stare at the computer screen. Well, did you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I fucking did. Well, what, what did you find? This train. At first, I thought it was weird that the counters were picking up dimensional values, but then… Quit with the nonsense, Kenneth. Laura, take a look at these readings. Reigns walks to the terminal, leaning forward to observe the readings. <sighs> we were right. EC Violation Notice 5850.A Copy of Ethics Committee Policy Violation for Kenneth Williams and Laura Reigns Ticket Number WO-00001458839 Assigned Agent Malcolm Dormansk Recipient Kenneth Williams Laura Reigns Summary Anonymous complaint received on April 1, 2020, 
concerning indecent emails between senior researcher Kenneth Williams and Dr. Laura Raines were uncovered and promptly investigated. Following the conclusion of this investigation, Kenneth Williams and Laura Raines have been warned about their behavior. It should be noted that failure to comply with Foundation policies and standards will result in corrective action up to and including termination. Our policy enforcement operatives on a three-strike system. This document is an official notice that the listed recipients have one strike on their record. This strike will be removed in one year if no other actions are taken against these recipients. This document, along with all of its attachments, have been saved to SCP-5850's file as it pertains to its continued investigation. Signed, Malcolm Dormansk. Are you ever going to explain what happened? You haven't been answering any of my texts, and I haven't been able to stay home long enough to talk to you. Are you okay? You uh, sounded really excited about what happened, and I know you've been submitting stuff to the higher-ups, so I know you haven't died. Just let me know what's happening, okay? We're in this together. I know you're busy, so please respond when you can. I'm getting worried. Laura I'm sorry about not getting back to you. You don't need to worry. I haven't become a zombie or anything, it's just… With what I've discovered, my excitement has gotten the best of me. I didn't mean to leave you in the dark. I'll be sending you some more information later. I'll be home later if you want to talk about it. This could be revolutionary if my theories are right. It's exciting to me, that's all. I just needed some time alone for a week or so to get all my thoughts into one place. Tell you what, let me take you to dinner sometime, just like we used to. P.S. After dinner, why don't we take the fun back home? It'll be just like we used to. If we're going to do it like we used to, at least go to the pharmacy before you come home. I know how fast you can finish. Addendum 5850-2 Document 303EM-5850.B All values and their theoretical effect on space-time. Status approved. Author Kenneth Williams, Laura Raines Synopsis For millennia, the human race has fantasized and dreamt of the places we would go to once we perished from the Earth. Religions, folklore, and even scientific studies have searched far and wide to ascertain the truth behind death. This simple question continues to plague us. What happens after we die? However, with the introduction of SCP-5850, the answer to an afterlife might have been inadvertently solved. Once we believed that our dimension, humanity's perception of reality, was stagnant and unchanging. With the introduction of anomalies such as SCP-3082 and SCP-4051, we now realize that dimensions such as ours can exist outside of our preconceived notion of reality. These anomalies can access, change, or fundamentally shift other dimensions to fit their needs. SCP-5850 is no exception. For these other dimensions, we have issued values that help reference their existence to our very own. Our dimension sits at a value of zero, with other dimensions spanning values from one to infinity. With dimensions closer to zero, we understand that they better relate to ours. But what would happen if a dimension held a value below zero? With the introduction of SCP-5850, we realize that dimensions are capable of doing exactly this. We understand that in order for dimensions to properly exist, organic matter must be able to fundamentally operate. With the introduction of these anti-dimensions, which are capable of possessing anti-space-time, it should only make sense that non-living matter must fundamentally operate there as well. Because of this, we have issued a unit of measurement, specified as ULFs, which measures the value of these anti-dimensions. ULF values also measure similarly to current dimensional values with numbers closer to zero relating to that of our own. SCP-5850's O value measures negative 0.001 at the time of this writing. If this theory is correct, the
The concept of an afterlife purely resides in these anti-dimensions. There could be an infinite amount of afterlives, each operating in their own ways. Perhaps heaven and hell and Judeo-Christian holy books are real, but differing in their oath values. More research is required to understand more about these anti-dimensions. Video Transcript 5850.B Video Log Date May 2, 2020 Note, The following video was recorded during the measurement of SCP-5850's oath value. Footage recorded was taken from the perspective of Senior Researcher Williams. Accompanying him is Dr. Raines, an MTF-ND1 Private Second Class Ryan Smith who was away from the area. Begin log. Video recording begins on a railroad split rail, with the camera facing towards the central point. In front of the camera is Dr. Laura Raines. Hey, are you going to explain why we're at this divide? I thought the plan was to go somewhere more controlled, like a clearing or something. It was, but we missed the opportunity. We just got some news that someone was hit. The place had been amnesticized, but now the train's faster than it was before. How much faster are you talking about? If it stayed consistent with the other ones, I'd say around 144 or 145 kilometers per hour. But besides that, this is the only other way it's heading that isn't a city or a town, so basically we're stuck here. Shit, how much longer do we have? A few minutes by this point. We need to hurry though. The counters still need to be placed in the right areas. Could you set them over there? Yeah, I can. Thank you, Laura. Reigns heads towards the designated area and begins placing the elf counters. After a moment, Kenneth walks towards a computer terminal located ten meters away. Hey, are you okay? Of course. Why wouldn't I be? It's just… you never answered my text last night. Kenny, I'm fine. I know you're excited about this project, but now isn't the time to discuss what's wrong with me. We can talk about it later. Are you sure? Fuck, it's already here. Laura, get away from the tracks! I hear it, Kenny. I'm trying. I just need to set up the last two counters, okay? Hurry, then! After several seconds, Reigns moves away from one of the elf counters and runs to the opposite side of the tracks. She quickly unfolds the final elf counter, quickly positioning it near the train tracks. Her body is directly across the edges of the track. SCP-5850 is visible, and is estimated to be approximately two kilometers away at this point. You need to pick it up! Laura! Fuck, just another second. Williams begins to quickly walk towards Reigns as she finishes with the elf counter. Once completed, Reigns quickly turns around to Williams. Alright, I'm cut. Williams began running towards Reigns. Several seconds later, SCP-5850 impacts Reigns before she can finish her sentence. At the same moment, Smith was able to intercept Williams before he was able to get any closer. Williams remained silent for several seconds afterward. As SCP-5850 leaves the area, another instance of SCP-5850-A appears in the final passenger car. End log. EC Violation Notice 5850.B Copy of Ethics Committee Policy Violation for Kenneth Williams Ticket Number W00015246161 Assigned Agent Malcolm Dormansk Recipient Kenneth Williams Summary Several reports concerning researcher Kenneth Williams' behavior were investigated on June 12, 2020. This behavior included, but was not limited to intimidation, physical aggression, indecent comments towards other personnel, and other related behavior. This document is an official notice that the listed recipient has two strikes on our record. These strikes will be removed in 18 months if no other actions are taken against this recipient. This document, along with all of its attachments, have been saved to SCP-5850's file as it pertains to its continued investigation. Final Notes While we condemn Senior Researcher Williams for these actions, we do understand the situation concerning Dr. Laura Raines. It is an unfortunate circumstance, 
but we are here to guarantee that the proper resources are available to Foundation personnel that are in need. Whenever Senior Researcher Williams is free, we highly suggest that he is scheduled for an appointment with the on-site therapist. Listed below are additional attachments that have been sent to Senior Researcher Williams. Signed, Malcolm Dormansk. Addendum 5850-3 EC Violation Notice 5850.C Copy of Ethics Committee Policy Violation for Kenneth Williams Ticket Number W00001542988 Assigned Agents Malcolm Dormansk Recipient Kenneth Williams Summary Continued complaints concerning Senior Researcher Williams has led to a final investigation. Once its investigation concluded, it was determined that Senior Researcher Williams continued to express violent and inappropriate behavior, specifically towards his colleagues. This document is an official notice that the listed recipient had three strikes on her record. Because of this, the Ethics Committee has deemed a motion, along with a transferal to be necessary. Please remove your belongings from any office or living quarters within your current site by Monday, August 8. This document, along with all of its attachments, has been saved to SCP-5850's file as it pertains to its continued investigation. Signed, Malcolm Dormansk. Six days after violation notice 5850.C, researcher Kenneth Williams and several ULF counters were reported missing. This led to an official investigation in which researcher Kenneth Williams was located near Las Vegas, Nevada. Attached below is the affiliated video log taken during the investigation. Incident Transcript 5850.C Video Log Date August 14, 2020 Note, The following video was recorded while four MTF ND1 members were searching for researcher Kenneth Williams. The recorded footage was taken from the perspective of MTF ND1 Captain Russells. Accompanying him is MTF ND1 Sergeant Stevenson, MTF ND1 Corporal Chad Mayers, and MTF ND1 Private Second Class Ryan Smith. Begin log. Video recording begins with MTF ND1 approaching a bridge that overlooks a railroad track. Further ahead, a man can be seen on the bridge. Approach slowly. Mayus, watch our six. Smith, get to the other side. Stevenson and I can handle the POI. Make sure you're set to non-lethals. Shoot if required. Roger. Russell progresses towards the bridge. Stevenson follows on his right side. Mayers and Smith step out of the frame. MTF ND1 continues to approach the figure. Are you in position, Smith? Affirmative. Standing by. Acknowledged. Hold your position. Establishing contact with POI. Russell signals Stevenson to hold his position as he continues towards the figure, who is hereby referred to as Williams. Once within a range of 10 meters, Russell stops moving. Freeze! We're here to escort you to a safer location. If you refuse to listen, we will use force. Hands up, Kenneth. Russell raises his weapons toward Williams. At the same moment, a blaring horn is heard nearby. Williams begins to laugh. Russell approaches slowly. I said, hands up! We will engage if you don't cooperate. Just leave me alone. Can't you see what I'm trying to do? Russell's advances. He is approximately five meters away from Williams. Along the edge of the frame, Smith also advances. Kenneth. Step away from the edge of the building and walk towards me, slowly. Williams takes a single step backward, leading his body to the edge of the bridge. Russells continues to approach Williams and is now four meters away. The sound of a horn can once again be heard, this time sounding louder. You don't understand. Laura isn't dead. Look, I know I sound crazy and stupid or whatever, but I know I'm right. I've been poring over the research for months. This is the only other place I know of where I can get close to SCP-5850. If I don't do it now, it'll only take more time before I travel somewhere else that I can get to. You have to let me at least try. That won't be necessary. Either you do as I order you, or we'll be forced to shoot. 
Look. None of the documents will tell you the truth. Laura and I spent so much wasted time. We would stay up all night for days, just looking over numbers in our bedroom. It was… it was peaceful. <sighs> I'm sorry for you, Kenneth, but how does any of that right now solve anything? You don't understand. Do you know what she was going to tell me before she died? We can talk about that once we're back home, but right now you're endangering yourself and plenty of other people. We need you to come with us. She… she had a miscarriage. After we spent forever trying to have one, I found the reports in her locker. Don't you get it? I can get her back. I know I can. I just need more time. You have to let me try. Nothing you're saying right now is making any sense. You're upset. I get it. But if anything were to happen to you, we would all be at a loss. Just let me do this. I have all the equipment set up. I just need this final test. You need to come with us. This is your final warning. SCP-5850 becomes visible behind Williams. Russell advances until he is approximately two meters away. Fine. So be it. I guess my only other option is to go where she is. Williams jumps backwards, going over the wall of the bridge. Russell attempts to fire at Williams, but is unsuccessful in incapacitating him. Williams falls to the ground in front of SCP-5850. Seconds later, SCP-5850 impacts Williams. God! Damn it! <sighs> Stevenson, get Mayers. Tell him to bring a body bag. End log. Following this incident, an additional SCP-5850-A was discovered sitting near another instance.